about eight years ago, I used to work as a bouncer at a strip club in New Orleans Eats called Visions. I would say it was one of the better strip clubs in the city. Some drugs, but no prostitution. And you were relatively safe when you came there. And my encounter with the black eye kids was freaky, man. I mean, it was some old Tales from the Crypt type stuff. You see, the club closes at 3 a.m. So by the time the last dancer gets out of the door, it's about 3.30. Since this is kind of a rough neighborhood, and they carry a whole lot of cash, I tend to take turns walking them to their cars. There was this one girl. I really liked her. She was cute. Her stage name was Too Young. I know, sounds crazy. But she looked like she was 17 years old. In actuality, she was 21. And she made tons of money because she really appealed to the pedophiles that came into the club. You know, they wanted a girl that looked like she was 17, but they didn't have problems because she wasn't 17. So she made a whole lot of money. Anyway, like I said, it was about 3.30, 3.35 a.m. We had just walked out of the front door, which faces Diamond Street, turned the corner, and headed into the parking lot. Now, if you can imagine, there were about 12 cars left out there, and they were all spaced out in different parking spaces. Her car was closer to the door. She would always get to work early so she could park closer to the door. As we walked, we talked and laughed and joked for a second. And when we got to her car, she leaned against the driver's side door facing me. And I was feeling good. You know, I was getting my flirt on. I did my best to spit as much game as I could. But while I was talking to her, I couldn't help but notice that her eyes seemed to be looking through me and right past me. Now, again, like I said, this being a rough neighborhood, immediately I figured somebody was walking up on us, put my hand on my weapon and turned around. Well, to my surprise, it wasn't adults walking up on us, but it was three kids coming from across Downman Street. Now, when I say kids, I mean kids. We talking about 10 to 13 years old. In New Orleans, a 13-year-old will shoot you in your head just like a 40-year-old would. So I turned to face them and had my hand on my weapon. Too Young, whose real name is Nancy, opened her car door and started to slowly slide herself in. Now, these three kids, two of which were about 25 yards away from me, and a third, which is 15 yards behind those other two, were coming directly towards me. At first, I thought they were from the neighborhood across the street. But then I started to notice their clothes. They were old. I don't mean like dirty and worn and nasty. I mean like old-fashioned 1990s type stuff. One of them had on blue jeans with these suede color patches on the front of it. And the other one had on blue jeans and a polka dot shirt. Their heads were down as they walked up. And the way they walked was creepy. You know, they had their heads down and they walked with their arms directly down by their sides. There was no sway in their body as they moved. It was almost robotic as they walked up on me. When the first two got about five to seven yards away, they stopped and looked up. And there it was. These were black kids with black eyes. I'm talking about black eyes. Now, Nancy must have seen what was going down because next thing you know, she's peeling out of the parking lot. I mean, flying past me. So I'm left standing alone in the parking lot. Two of these kids, freaky looking kids. Black eyes, about seven yards away. Another one behind them at 10 yards. And for a second, I really thought like somebody was fucking with me. I thought it was a prank. I thought it was like one of those TV shows. I thought that somebody in the club put these kids up to it. That was until they started talking and their voices were synchronized. We need a ride. And you have to understand, 3.30 in the morning, I'm in a parking lot. Three black, three black children with black eyes are within reaching distance of me. And they're all talking in perfect sync. We need a ride. At this point, I started to feel a little shook up. I was thinking maybe I should pop one of them in the leg and then head into the club just in case they were trying to rob me. But I kept staring into these black eyes. Then they said it again. Do you have a car? We need a ride. Now, shooting one of them really wasn't an option. My white shellmation in the black neighborhood of the city on camera shooting three black kids. That's not going to float. I'm going to prison. I did the only thing I could think to do. I hauled ass inside. Ran around to the front of the building, up the steps, into the door, and straight to the security booth. When I got to the security booth, I was shook. I mean, when I say shook up, I was shook. So I got on the camera, rewinded the tape. Now, this is the freakiest thing. When I rewound the tape, I saw me and Nancy walk out of the club, head over to the car. I saw me talking to her as she leaned on the car. I watched myself turn around. 
I watched myself put my hand on a gun. I watched her drive off. But there were no kids on the camera anywhere. I even watched myself run back in the club like a madman. No kids on the tape, nowhere to be found. At this point in time, I'm thinking I'm losing my mind. So I pick up my cell phone, dial Nancy. That's when it really hits me. She tells me that she's five blocks away at a gas station, and she had to pull over because the little kids with the black eyes scared her. I work for a courier company. My job was to pick up these specimens at the hospital and transport them from one to the next. Well, one morning after doing my pickup from the hospital, I was driving on a two-lane highway, and I noticed that there was another car coming in my direction. Now, initially, I could only see one person in this car. The person driving, it was a woman. She had this curly black hair. She was kind of cute, which made me look at her in the first place. She had this textbook style of driving, one hand at 10 and the other hand at 2. Now, right as we were about to pass each other, for some reason, something told me to look over into the car. And for a second, I started experiencing this weird thing where it kind of seemed like time slowed down. And for that moment, I saw someone sitting in the car next to her. Now to be clear, I know for a fact this person was not there when I was approaching his car. But right next to her in the passenger seat was what looked like a woman. She had very, very dark hair. She had this pale white skin. And the freakiest thing of all was she had these deep set dark eye sockets. So when our cars finally passed, I thought to myself, whoa, 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 what was that? And what probably makes no sense to anybody, I decided to turn around and head back in the opposite direction and take a second look. Now, I had to tail this car for a couple of miles because we were in a two-lane highway. When we got to the first red light where I could make a right turn, I pulled up on a passenger side of the car and looked over. And it happened again. Everything started to go in slow motion. And this thing in the passenger seat the thing with the dark hair and pale milk-like skin and these solid black eye sockets, it looked directly at me. And then it opened its mouth and there was just this gaping hole of darkness. And for a moment, I felt like my soul was about to be sucked out of my body. Then time sped up again. And as I looked forward, I was crashing into the curb. No. I wasn't injured, and my car didn't have any major damage, but I just sat there for a moment, and it started to sink in. I had just witnessed something that I shouldn't have never seen. Listen, the story I'm about to share with you is 100% true. My grandfather lived in Utah. And he used to tell me these stories about the skinwalkers and how they could take the form of any animal or person that you knew. So one day I asked him, Grandpa, did you ever meet one of those skinwalkers? He told me yes. I proceeded to ask him when. He said a very long time ago, before you were born and even before your mother was born. It was when he was young and foolish, he said. I went to the valley of the skinwalkers. It's a place where life never enters. Not even a crow's. And they are the very guardians of death. They won't even go there. My grandfather said he went out there to prove people wrong. He wanted to prove to them that no such evil existed in Skinwalker Valley. Boy, was he wrong. My grandfather sat on the porch with me, and he mumbled a little bit. Then he proceeded on and finished telling his story. You see, he had gone to Skinwalker Valley in his old red Ford pickup truck. When he reached the valley, he described how the grass was black, as if there had just been a fire, but it didn't kill all of it, and some of it was still allowed to grow. He said that everything around him looked dead, but yet it was still alive including the trees. Grandpa told me about this house that he could see in the distance. It was old, and the roof was caved in. The front door to the house was gone, and as he walked towards it, 
There were these strange markings on the side of the house. Animal skeletons were strewn around the property as if it was some type of sacred burial ground. Then he heard her. His grandmother. The only problem was his grandmother had been dead a long time ago, but yet he still heard her. The spirits were beginning to call for him, for his life, for his skin, his blood, and his soul. These were the lost souls that could change form from man to beast. They began to chase him and told him that they would never, ever forget his face. You know, I always thought it was strange because whenever I would visit my grandpa, he would show me something that he had just bought brand new. And within two days, it was broken. These spirits completely disrupted his life. They would kill his animals and killed so many that he finally kept his dogs inside. Being a little smart ass kid, I didn't believe anything Grandpa was telling me. So I kind of snapped at him. I said, Grandpa, those stories are lies. And my child like mine, I challenged them. Grandpa, you got to prove this to me. That's when he stood up on the porch, turned his back to me, and took off his shirt. All I could do was gasp for air and stare at his back. It's hard to describe, but it was scratched and torn. There was literally no part of his back that was unscathed. These were claw marks, wide claw marks, too straight and too far apart to be made by human hands. And that moment it hit me. Something had been attacking my grandfather and my childish mind couldn't handle it, so I began to cry. To this day, I remember my mother running outside, grabbing me and holding me. And when she saw Grandpa's back, she began to fuss and scream and ask him, Why would you show him that? Why would you show him that? But Grandpa just stood there staring. His eyes locked across the road, into the field across from his house. Finally tired of fussing, my mother picked me up and turned to walk back into the front door. And that's when I saw it. There was this huge black dog with white eyes. It was just standing there watching Grandpa. He stared at it and it stared at him. Almost as if they were waiting for some type of battle to begin. But it never did. And I never saw that dog again. A few months later, my Grandpa died. The doctors told the family that his heart had given out. But I knew that was a lie. His arm had fresh claw marks. That was 42 years ago to this day. And there's one thing I can tell you. Never look into a skinwalker's eyes. It will never forget you. And if you do, sooner or later it will have your soul.